and the meeting is yours. Okay. The 6.31 p.m. on uh, Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. This is the meeting of the Carpentry Land Trust. Uh, first uh, order is to determine a quorum. So uh, we'll do roll call. Jack Donovan. Here. Lori Carmody. Here. Lynn Carlson. Here. Joyce Peretta. Here. Linda Brennan. Here. And one under it here. Uh, presently, uh, Jenna Odell is not here, but we are expecting that she will be here. All right, John, okay. evacuation instructions. Yep, uh, either of the doors in front of me and take the left out of the building. Okay, all right, April 18th, uh, sure. approval of the April 18th, 18th, 2023 meeting minutes. Everybody got a copy of those? Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion to yeah. accept the minutes as uh, presented? So moved. A motion made by Rory. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Linda. Any discussion on those minutes? None. All those in favor say of accepting the minutes as printed, say aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted. All right. May 6th, uh, site walk at Crystal Trail. We did not have a quorum. And May 6th, uh, work session at Munford Street. We did not have a quorum. So we move those and reschedule those activities. Um, okay. Next on the agenda, outreach avenues to uh, encourage and organize volunteers and yep. the uh, The high school was very, they had a great time at the Earth at the Earth Day. And Dr. Pothier asked said that we keep them informed. So I thought next, if we have a site walk again, I would let them know that to see if they wanted to join. Mm -hmm. um, Weston, who graduated last year, wants to be on the land trust at some point which is nice mm -hmm. told me he should also come to the meetings i forgot to send him though that it was this week um i was going to reach out to project friends town of coventry uh because they have some adult programs for folks with disabilities there bob robelot runs so i thought we might be able to to mortgage some some folks there as well mm -hmm. yeah they were a great help but uh, i certainly want to thank them for their um, they had a great time they were very eager and um, yep. energetic for our, mm -hmm. our walk so and the work that we accomplished, yep. very helpful, very strong carrying a tire out. Yeah. Yeah. The way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was very relieved. It was the ambition. That's great. And I uh, certainly thank them. And I would love to see them at any of our activities. Yeah, to help definitely. Us. It's good. Great. That was, uh, and thanks again, Rory, for getting that. Absolutely. Appreciate that. All right, Land Trust website um, updates, page contents, any um, updates for the website that you want to talk about? We had asked about whether we can put links on our website to other sources of information. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you were going to look into that. Yeah, I didn't get a clear answer on that. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I, we had kind of gone back and forth last night. Right. It kind of depended on. Um, whether it was like a for-profit or more of like a, an informational type thing. So I think it's just on a case-by-case -case basis type okay. of thing. Um, so if we have a list of, of sites that we want to put on there, I'll just send them to Cody and then he can make that determination. He can ask whoever he wants to. So if you have a specific link, if you want to forward it to my email, and then I'll, I'll forward it to them and they can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay. Should Cody be the point of contact for future like say in a month yeah we want to have a link mm -hmm. put on there yeah he Just, he i mean he's the one that i contact anyway okay. <laughs> for that type of stuff so he'd okay. be the best option and i believe we, i guess we funnel it through you glenn and then you yeah I, I think once we get our new director on board too we want to keep him in the loop so yeah i would i would you know we'll, we'll get him hopefully up next meeting and then we'll let him run with the approval just so he doesn't get blindsided by something that why is that on the website you know um, so so, so did i if i have a list that i send it to you and then you would send it to you can copy me and send it to gail oh okay. so gail is like our distribution channel of okay of, of stuff um you can copy me and then um, like I say, I think what we should do is wait and before we stop putting links and and other than updates to the maps and things that we already have going, um, let's get the new director on board just so we don't 
Don't step on anyone's toe. And also, as as John said, we, you know, we can't advertise. Everything needs to be vetted happily these days, as you know, as for what the links are. So we're not getting ourselves. And I know most of the things that we deal are pretty innocuous, well, just in the world that we're living in that we don't want to have any wrong link posted on the, the website, I'll say. Yep. Um, I let the record show that Jenna has Odell has joined us here. So we have a full full quorum now, full board at 637. Um and so Jenna, all we've done so far is the minutes and the outreach. Um we had no quorums for the two uh, site walks and more sessions there, I should say. Now we're on the important calendar dates. Do we have any new updates? Any dates to, that we're focusing on? Any new activities? Other than land trust days, nothing new. Okay. Potential properties of interest. Um, um I getting this might be a good time to bring up you know, it's not elsewhere. Um Erin Gilmet, she's been in touch with. Um, she was in touch with Director Durfee and then and then me, and then she's been listening into a couple of the meetings. Um, I don't think she's on tonight. No, I don't see her. But um, I guess she's part of the uh, Middle Dam, the Middle Dam okay. Pond Conservation Association. So this mm -hmm. is something that I think that the the land trust, not saying that they they have to pursue it, but should at least consider. Um, I guess they the town owns a, a piece of property near the middle dam. Um, and it's been town owned property for quite some time. And according to her, there was a plan to come up with, uh, uh, I don't know if it was parks and rec. They wanted to do picnic benches and have like a beachy area, um, trails, things like that. Um, they were even going to construct a parking lot. The plan seemed to have fizzled out for one reason or another. Um, I mean, we're talking years and years in the mm -hmm. making of all this. So now they're trying to reignite that, and they thought that the land trust might be a good um, avenue to try to get something like this off the ground. So they're proposing um, a cleaning up of the area and creation of trails leading off the existing Breezy Lake Beach. Um, I did reach out to... Uh, uh, Raina Blumenthal to kind of see if this is something that is kind of in there, if the ball's in their court. We don't want to step on anybody's toes, of course. Um, she replied back that she had no uh, uh, information on that specific property. And at this point, they don't have the uh, um, ability to take on any more, any more property. Can you just bring it up on the, the yeah. map so everyone's familiar? I did take a quick look earlier on this to see. And close. Yeah. She has keys to the gate though, right? I don't know. So this is off of 116. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're looking at this partial 7 p.m. Pretty short. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's right off of the Middle Dam Pond, and there's access off of Benoni Street and Puritan Ave at that corner. And it looks like there's also off this white rock road. So is, where is the beach there? Is that I guess it's enough? along, I think it, part of it's covered up by this layer here. Um I don't know how much of a beach right. it is. And actually it looks like I'm looking on a map that she had given. I think they had oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong area. So it's up here. This is the, the beach area or what they had said was going to be a swimming area. And then they were going to have a picnic area in this area and then parking here. How would you access the parking? Off of this. Right oh, all right. This path here. And that's the, 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 there's the road that goes. Yeah, there's a bit of a road that, that kind of leads into okay. there. 
So, okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it, it was just something that was brought to the department's attention. I don't quite know how or if it fits into the land trust um, kind of goals. Um, but, but this it, is a piece we own? It's a piece of the town owns. It's not necessarily yeah. land, land trust, trust, but I mean the town yeah, owns it. Was it, yeah. Park and Rec, I remember. it was Parks and Rec. It was Parks and Rec? In there. Okay. It would be more recreational. Yeah. Would, yeah. That isn't a forested or a whatever resources area, is it? No. And and that's why I, the, the land trust is going to have to decide if it, it is something worth pursuing. This was just something that was brought to our attention. We didn't want to <laughs> not bring it to your attention. Yeah, it looks like it already has a trail on it. Right. What's that other that little green dash? Is that just marking a well? The road goes into the beach. Oh. Over there. oh, there's a road that goes in there? Yeah. Right there's yeah. some path and oh, yeah. some debris along the side that, of the path. Does the green dashed line green represent the, no, the wetland boundary? I believe it does, yeah. Okay. Well, I was hoping. <laughs> yeah, As like I was zooming in, the, the symbol was getting smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I believe that's the okay. there's what we said. Probably trails that people have bushwhacked. You know, yeah. That we could widen. That's what an eight acre parcel. Um, six. Oh, eight acre parcel. Seven. Seven. Yeah. What's the six? In the land that used to be lower, Dan, can you bring that up a little? Because we have walked that before. We did a site walk. It comes out onto, you know, near the. Uh, of uh, what Maynard Funeral Home, Capwell Street. And does the town own that? Probably. I'm not sure where we are. The lot's just to the south of the, the little the second pond there. Like 75 or 78. Big lot there. Yeah, that must no. be what we did. Maybe it's the one just below that one. That yeah. one carpentry, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's town that's what I'm sure. It's all pretty wet there. Yep. The water comes down. How many acres is that? Seven point four. <clears throat> okay, well, I think that's, you know, interesting. Again, that may be more, since it's not directly our property, but it is the town's property, something that, you know, for an Earth Day project or whatever, if they're looking for a cleanup, yeah. or that'd be a great place to keep clean and yeah. and do a work, right. work group. And that I understand that there's some association that seems to be involved in running this area or whatever um or involved in the area because there's a we're talking about weeds and various things filling in the ponds and various other stuff on their website but okay that's mm -hmm. that's good like i say i think it's not directly ours so mm -hmm. but maybe of interest to do we know if the pond stays in decent condition for swimming year round I, I think the picture on their website is saying they're dealing with a lot of invasive weeds yeah, and yeah. completely filling it in. So, um, I mean, the only thing I know about is that there's always this, the past two years, <clears throat> they've had this thing where they're fundraising to oh, right, get rid of the weeds. Yeah. Like, yeah. Managing invasive aquatics is a production. Yeah. Um, very challenging. My concern would be making trails by the wetland part of the parcel because I wouldn't want people like walking through it and further disturbing that wetland mm -hmm. and to keep that pristine, but they could also at the same time go to it and clean up like if there's any garbage or anything in there. Mm -hmm. I would suggest anyone that has an opportunity just to take a drive up in the that's it is town property there so mm -hmm. um we can certainly take a spin in and see what that road looks like and then report back maybe for the next board meeting if someone what road is it to get in there that white rock white rock, white rock drive okay 
Yeah, it'd be good to have at least some feedback. Off of Nadia Grove. Okay. Okay. Uh, grant opportunities next on our agenda. I've not heard anything from Cornell. Um, John, I forgot to send you a copy of the grant. I've got to That's find it. Maybe you get a chance. It was online. I don't know that I saved a, a hard copy of it, but I will find it. Um, but I haven't heard back from them. Okay. And I don't. I haven't seen anything on DM's website about anything coming up. No, I know they were talking that the uh, Kate Sales was. They're, they're upset that they're not right. looking to fund again. Right. Um, which is interesting that the the um, state is not pushing farmland preservation right. anymore as one of the budget priorities for bond money or whatever. But that's going to be an ongoing battle for I'm sure for the next future as for. I um from the workshop we went to the land and water um, mini summit. They gave me. A, they talked about a website that has um, like a gathering place for um, funding sources. And so um, I probably should have forwarded this link to Gail. But um, this one, I just printed off the first two pages and it says there's um, 86 or 88 um, programs found that, you know, different options for funding. So I don't know, I don't know a whole lot about grant writing or funding. So. Well, the town is just, as John mentioned, has put on a position for helping write grants. So I think oh, the, mm -hmm. the biggest thing is, is that you have to have a specific target. You know, they don't yeah. want right. a uh, blank slate. So we would have to, you know, be targeting something and then going after what appropriate and then the grant writer that. could fill out based on our okay. input. So I think we need a specific project that we want funding for. Yeah, with that yeah. position, the way that it's been explained to me is they will, it, it almost sounds like a, a liaison type of thing where they'll they'll talk to the people who are, who are funding the grant, um, get information, what is and and try to figure out what is going to make this uh, application stand out amongst the rest. Um, and then they'll do like a final review of everything and um, make sure that it's looking its best before it's submitted. So they won't actually write anything, um, but they'll make sure that it's they'll make sure that it's a, a good brand, I guess. Okay. So again, it comes back to, you know, there's, there are funding opportunities out there. We just need a project to say that this is what we want funded. And then mm -hmm. with one of these organizations most likely would be interested in funding um, one of those capital projects. So would it be better for me to send this link to Gail? Yeah. Or she can send it to everyone. Yeah, put it in the okay. yeah. way people can look at it and something pops in someone's head, and then we can say, hey, I, you know, we have a, just like the Cornell um, grant thing, is an opportunity. So, under what section do we talk about ideas for projects on the agenda? Um, so that one, uh, like, because I, I came up with an idea you today because I went to a conference and okay. I could propose it. Well, you could talk about it under grant opportunity. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay. It's like a first initial yeah. depth brainstorming idea. Okay, so um, I went to this uh, the Northeast Park Users Conference um, Spring Conference today and they had a presentation from people in Connecticut DEP where they put up um, these little infrared boxes along the trails and infrared boxes count trail usage. So when somebody passes by or when a group of people pass by, it counts that. And then they have these boxes set up on all the different trails throughout Connecticut. And then they're unable to collect the data to see what the use, basically what the usage of the trail is. Hmm. And that would be a possibility for us if we are interested in sort of trying to validate 
<laughs> that would be the, cool. The important the trails cool. in in the town. Mm -hmm. um, the boxes. I looked on the website. Is the boxes are made by a company called Traf X, I think. T R A F, and then the letter X. And there's an initial setup. I think that was two thousand dollars or something. And then for every box we want after that initial setup, they're like five hundred dollars each. So we could propose to a grant funder that they fund these the initial setup and maybe ten boxes we could put up. Mm -hmm. um, and we could put those at various either all on one trail or on two properties or something and I don't know just see how it goes mm -hmm. to collect the information we could then present to the town and say this is yep. yeah. not being very technique savvy how do you set that up do you have to have a source of electricity or is it uh, I'm gonna guess it's solar no, no, right. there, there was no mention of electricity I can't imagine that you would have to have it no I, so they didn't really specify no how. it's probably just like a game camera that you're going to put some batteries in every so often yeah, and you have okay. to change out and okay. it's just going to do the same thing every time the beam is broken it's gonna yeah. yeah they did mention that they have a I mean in Connecticut obviously they have huge much more resources than we would as us but they said they have a, volunteers assigned to each um, infrared box and that the volunteer goes out at quarterly and downloads the data to this collector thing um, and then they clean you know clean it out to make sure like spider webs and branches and stuff aren't mm -hmm. collecting inside the box and I asked about vandalism too and they said they they've had a little bit of vandalism but they come with locks so that that decreases the vandalism on them that would be great that would be wonderful much. yeah that's then we could say, like, I don't know, Stella Hall is being used a lot. We should prioritize right. engagement there. Mm. Mm -hmm. But vandalism certainly would be a concern. concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was some recently. Yeah. Maybe if we could connect it with some of the geocaching we saw when we were walking. It would just, again, mm -hmm. publicize people wanting to go there. Mm -hmm. when on the, one of the trails, John, they had a, a geocache there. So if you did mm -hmm. your cell phone, it popped up that this is violet or whatever. It gives you a little descri descri description of what you just you know, saw the, yeah, the trail. Yeah. It's just, I think, a good way to engage families and young people as well. You could also write, um, and this would be, I think they call them like micro grants, um, grants for printing like um, engagement supplies. So like pamphlets, but also the logo and use it like as a sticker mm -hmm. or your maps mm -hmm. to give out, um, or maybe like, especially like limited maps as prizes or something like that. Well, anyway, I'll put that idea out mm -hmm. as a potential like that. project to go yep. for a grant for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Linda having a list of opportunities, maybe we'll find one in there that once such you know, mm -hmm. that the technology side of, of things. Then what was the conference doing with what uses? Uh, the Northeast ARC. ARC ARC? Yep. Okay. And they have conference twice a year. And today was the spring one, which took place at URI. Oh. Um, it's, it's basically for GIS people. Um, okay. And they had lots of presentations, one of which was this Connecticut group from Connecticut DP. And I can forward, they gave us a URL for what their dashboard where they keep track of all the stuff that would be cool yeah that to you guys mm -hmm. okay all right anything else on grant opportunities all right moving on to old business to cover uh grass at property in mumford street was reschedule our work session to go walk the, the property there that we have acquired um you know, we got Memorial Day weekend coming up, so I mean, I'm not making the concept with some people. Have any preferences and whether we want to still do the same two? Hopefully, we'll be in town so we can be helpful to help with the quorum. 
we'll both grass it in the McGuire setting a date and a rain date. I won't be able to come on the on Memorial no. Day again. Brother, brother no. coming into town. The following week. Doesn't he want to play? <laughs> What's going on this weekend? <laughs> Uh, I am busy this weekend, so I'm not going to be able to do this weekend. It'll be the third or the fourth. Um, I could do the third only before 10. I can do the third. I cannot do the fourth. I'm in New Hampshire that weekend. Family reunion weekend. I can do the 10th or the 11th. Thank you. Ten through 11 looks good. Yeah. Okay. 10 through 11. 11th yeah. after three for me. But if the morning works for everyone else, that's fine. I have no qualms doing an afternoon one either. So. A little cooler. You're probably in that's important true. because you haven't walked that. Right. You know, one of the properties, right? Yeah, so, if I if so. we do schedule something for the morning, I would just probably walk it another time by myself. Um, so let's go. Well, all right, June 10th is available, right? Yes. Yep. Everybody before 10. I now um am actually part of DEM, so oh. require me to do weekend work. Technically, I belong to the federal government, but D app supervises me. <laughs> There's always somebody. <laughs> so you're on the 10th. What's your schedule again? Um, before 10 or after 6. Okay. And that's not a great time. Well, I, I don't mind starting early. Yep. Yeah, that would probably be better because it's starting to be summer and hot. Yeah, it's easier to get. I don't mind. So do we want to do... Um, I'd like to get for sure the McGuire property. We own Grasset. So if we don't get anything done with Grasset, we don't own the McGuire and the landowners are looking. So let's put that as a 8 a.m. Okay, sure. Yeah. June 10th. Yep. And would we be able to do the next property? Because one of the things we found is when we walked to the McGuire property, it was like over a mile in or almost a mile in. It's it's in it's a little it takes you 15 minutes to get yeah, onto to, the, to the property. So why don't we just why don't we just leave it for this? Let's just get the McGuire property done and not, not be crazy and then come back on a section um the schedule grass at property because i think grass at property will take us some time to, to do both sides of the property to take a look at for trail mapping and and stuff Isn't so that work for you, Lynn? yes yeah yeah the 8 a.m on the 10th yep for to do mcguire yeah McGuire. let's let's, yep. let's get that done and then because we're going to have enough work on our plate between now and um doing our land trust days to even really do anything more than just do some preliminary work at grasset so let's let's just go after somebody that's looking to, to same thing just trail. park at trestle trail the men's club yeah, yeah. meet at the uh, yeah the corner at trestle trail parking lot the men's at the phillips Hill road at the men's club okay do you want to consider a rain date just in case um yeah let's do after can we do the 11th after like 4 p.m on the 11th sure yep and just as a backup just so it's there for rain day so on the 10th at 8 a.m yep. on the 11th at 4 4 p.m the rain day schedule all right so that's for the mcguire property and we'll keep the grasser property on the agenda for reschedule but we won't set a date. Is that good with everyone? Do I hear a motion to accept that as the dates? Motion to accept the dates of June 10th for the McGuire property 
at 8 a.m., back up to an 11th at 4, and hold off on doing the grassy property. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, so voted. Okay, good. Buxdale property, any updates? Have we had anything done at all from our? Um, I'll take uh, the Boxdale and the David Hayes property and the Mendy property kind of as one if we can, um, because I think the the next logical step is to get this in front of the council on, on whatever we do. Um, so it's worth, so we're not spending money and getting a, ourselves into the trap that we fell into with the uh, uh, Leah Cavanaugh property. Um, and uh, spending money before I have an answer from everybody. So um, now that the solicitor and the manager have kind of become acclimated a little bit and they're somewhat through the budget season, um, they wanted to push everything off until July. And I explained to them that this is on, on the market. Oh, yeah. We do need some sort of definite answer. Like, can you get us on? So um, they're, they're willing to get us onto uh, an upcoming agenda. It's just um, now my question to the board uh, or to the land trust is uh, um, if there is anything that you guys want to present to them, um, I, I'll, I'll set up the meeting and I'll let you guys know when the meeting is. Um, I just, uh, it, the timing worked out well where I can ask you guys if, if there's a packet that you guys want to put before the council. I, I imagine that that would go a long way with them so they don't have a million questions and they have something to reference. Um, and I think that's kind of what we can talk about here is um, what do you guys want to present for the council and who's going to put together a packet? I know Dennis kind of took that ball and ran with it in the past. So just, just going and dropping down to the Mende property, mm -hmm. did we get an appraisal established yet? So yeah, there are three, we have three bids okay. and um, they're mm -hmm. kind of at the ready. Um, I, I would need to reignite that conversation with, with one of them to say, yes, you got it. Um, but again, I didn't want to just go in and allocate funds that right. if, if we don't even know if the council is, is even willing to consider. So yes, they're at the ready, but I think, and, and let me know if you guys disagree, but I, I think the first step is talking to the council. Well, the, the one thing that we won't know for sure, other than potentially saying what we've thought that we'd offer or be interested in the Hayes property is, is prices. And that's always one of the things that the council was going to um, sort of, so we can sort of generically caveat where we think we are and those the Boxdale is a donation but it's obviously a cost to do the subdivision work that needs to get done which is survey and <clears throat> so it, it, I mean it puts property in a good part of town as well I mean I think that can't be overlooked that's really central Coventry you know mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that needs to be included. You yeah. know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, having a map and a picture of yeah. the property um, and a short little description and write up and what the status of where we are with discussions and what we need from the council to, to you know, as John said, we don't want to go down the road and then say, well, they're not interested. Right. I think they're going to take our recommendation of the property, you know, based on, but we don't want to get, you know, the, the bigger thing is, is, is just numbers. They're certainly interested in numbers and it's our, you know, even though we have had this budget, it's not coming out of the. I was just going to say, it's, the money's there. It's not like we're taking it from. Yeah. Them. Well, they're, they're also stewards of the town. So they have yeah. responsibility to make sure. So I think it's just having the presentation okay. um, put together. I can write up natural descriptions um, mm -hmm. specifically for the haze because that one I've been to. Mm -hmm. Do you know if I'd be able to visit the other two because we don't own them? Uh, sure. Um, we can reach out to uh, Nancy and uh, I forget her husband's name, Mende, 
they've been they're very nice people in my city. I think you're right. Yeah. So, Mr. Tristan, <laughs> yeah. Um, to get so you can just walk the, it's the front bit and they they gladly show you their oh yeah their, their yeah. Mm -hmm. property. Um, so we can reach out and that way you can do and the Boxdale property. Um, I can just send um George's uh, email there to say that our next step is just we're doing the write ups and stuff mm -hmm. though, and that's right in front of the the uh, Grasset property. It's really just the parking, the sliver of land there. So it's just, you know, that one's pretty, pretty easy to do a quick write up on. And the Mende one, and um, certainly the Hayes one was certainly one that your input, along with a, the yeah, map, like a map stuff and an aerial and a regular, you know, you know. And highlight any wetlands and stuff. Yeah. And, then, mm -hmm. and then I think with your, you know, especially like on the Hayes property, the the value of the preserving the adjacent water, you know, it's a feeder for the, mm -hmm. so I think your input would be great on that. Sure. We could just all we need is a packet and then we can forward it, put it together and send it to John. And, um, we have enough. any prior ones that we could use as examples that maybe Dennis yeah. yeah, the last one was copies. the grassy property. Okay. The basic part of, of what they're looking for is where is it, what does it do for the town, you know, for, for purposes, and does it match our objective? What benefits? Good news, it does. It does. Well, it meets well goes, with yeah. scored on our, yeah. and I think Dennis also included our mm -hmm. overall scoring sheet to prove that it met our mm -hmm. standards. So, so how soon do we need to get a packet together? As soon as we get it, something together, we can give it to John to get us in front of the council to get on. Mm -hmm. a so if we have a packet in a couple of weeks, then, you know, it's usually going to take us that long even to get a fit in on one of their agendas. Okay. And the time may work a little bit better that we'll be pushing into later June anyways yeah. and pass the... The budgets and stuff and just moving forward and hope that nothing adverse happens to these properties between now and then of course they could the Hayes property is on the market still so right. and I don't think the development rights for the Mendes property um you know is going anywhere anywhere mm -hmm. fast um, and the Boxdale George is you know is looking to donate his the rest of the property to a Conservancy group or whatever at some point, if anyone's interested in. So, should we schedule a work session for people to put together a packet? Or I think we can schedule a, a work session evening after you know the um, or just a, even if it's a special meeting to assemble a packet. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, so. After Jenna gets her groundwork and Lynn gets her groundwork, and we review the, uh, you know, we bring the scoring sheet from the, the properties, uh, we'll, we'll sit down and just put the, the final touches on it. So let's, I'll let Jenna, you know, she's going to have to do, get her schedule with her work schedule and stuff, need some time to get this mm -hmm. all done. So yeah. why don't, Jenna, when you have your, when you're ready, and I think Lynn will probably be able to grab her maps and stuff off of the um, areas fairly, fairly quick. So why don't you reach out to Gail and say, I've got the stuff, um, you know, on my end, and then we can schedule a, you know, we have to have a couple of days notice anyway to post a, a meeting. Yeah, once I walk the properties, I won't do the full write-up that I did for our properties. So just a short summary won't take that yep. long. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And where are the scoring things? Do we have them on record somewhere? The we have them on record, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. We did a master sheet, and if not, right. I've got, got my master sheet, and we can go back to and watch our old video of each one of the, the, the David Hayes property wasn't too, too long ago, and, and Mende's property wasn't too, too long ago, so we just have to go back. If I, I mm -hmm. think I kept the... 
the sum tally because we adjusted okay. ours as we went along and discussed it out. So, and the box dealt proper, you yeah. probably wouldn't need the scoring sheet right. anyway. It's serving a different purpose. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. It'll be access to our parking area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll send a quick email to uh, Mr. Boxdale, just tell him, Jenna, that, that way, not that anyone's going to bother you there, you know, that you'll be okay. doing just surveying the property, and I'm sure that's not an issue, and I'll reach out to um, Nancy and, and Bill and Dave, and um, I'll give you, after I talk to them, I'll give you their contact number, so you can just say, you know, set up with them some evening or whatever. It took us... Our walk around the property, we were there for like 35, 40 mm. minutes. You know, we had a little bit more time, formal introduction, but the, mm. for you, for your perimeter walk, which will we'll be able to gather a lot of what that property was like, okay. probably half an hour. Okay. Thank I'll you. Reach out. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? And as John said, he, he's looking to put together. So we have, you know, we try and nail the council down with one session of work so we can explain where we are with our projects and what we're looking for. So when they next time they'll be looking for official, you know, we'll spend the money for the appraisal and, and get all that going. Or appraisals as necessary. Work session, Rhode Island uh, landscape, industry <laughs> landscaping. I have not heard back yet. Okay. If you want to realty, do they drop off any? Nothing. So I, I, I got a call from uh, Mondo, um, who is owner of Capuano Realty. This is the property that's the 100 acre property behind Reed, uh, uh, off of Reed's schoolhouse or behind the school itself, south of the. So we called now Washington. Washington. Yeah. And he wanted to know where we were on this. And I referred him back. I said, we've had several different prices that are estimates that you have asked all the way from a million dollars to 300 and some thousand dollars and been all over the place. So I said, when he called me, it's just like, no, the land trust. You know, we've been through this, um, you know, and we need some something in writing, you know, for us to even consider going back because at a million dollars for a landlocked piece of property, it's not going to, you know, right. it's not going to even fly on. Um, the skinny appraisal came back at, I think Dennis did the skinny appraisal, which is, you know, obviously with the market has changed a little bit, but it was substantially less than than 300,000. So we're just even on a low number. And then he keeps talking about this house. And I said from our previous discussions, the, the trust isn't interested in the house. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they own this as well. That was, yeah, that's his only access to the back. Otherwise, it's landlocked. And he owns that, you know, and that's, he, we're not interested in really purchasing the house. Our interest from our walk on the site was that it was a nice area with a huge wetland that could support lots of different wildlife. We saw lots of signs of wildlife and then lots of rugged, untouched terrain. And we felt that it could be kept as that and it should be kept as that versus someone trying to develop it and it would go nicely being behind the school. Um, so that's where we left it at that point. So I said, drop off something you you come up with what you're looking for because we have to go get an appraisal and we're not going to go get an appraisal if we don't have something that's you know reasonably so he did not drop that off um, but john he said he would yeah no he did call me i don't know if it was before or after he had spoken to you and wanted to know like what the status was which confused me a little bit i said <laughs> you know um we had informed you that we weren't going to be considering the million dollars um quite some time ago when you were informed of that but um and then i think he he wanted your uh he what he wanted to get in touch with you i yep. so um yeah no i haven't gotten any news as of now nothing in uh uh in letter form or through email or anything like that okay. 
So it seems to be a lot of activity at that 126. There's a lot of heavy truck traffic in and out. That gravel bank, I guess, must be the feature. Mm. You know, beyond the big yeah. one that's farther up, the, uh, what is it, green whatever. Green. Yeah. Green light. That's. Yeah. So the whole area could become. <laughs> mm. one massive gravel bank mm. as our natural resources go. So we don't want to maybe spend a million, but sure. that's a very, you know, wooded area with the water running through. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the next agenda item. I'm going to talk to you. Management related discussion and issues, drones, uh, update and review of footage. Do we have anything on that? I can play if you want. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is this sound on? Oh, maybe. Yeah, nice. I'm sure what's happening with the sun. Is it sound? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is just good. Is it on? Is it on YouTube somewhere? Not yet. He just I sent us so, so we could look at it oh, and make okay. any. <laughs> Seems like everything's on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But anyway. Imagine the yeah. sound though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It works better with sound. <laughs> Here they go. Mm -hmm. It looks like a early yeah. walkie talkie. Yeah. Yeah. There's the dog. <laughs> oh, the, dog. the dog made it. <laughs> My grandkids. Oh. Yep, they're the grandkids. There's Linda. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very good. But it's nice with the music. It just adds a little bit yeah. another dimension yeah. to it. Yeah. That's weird that it wouldn't play. Yeah. Nice. All right. Great. Probably share that with the town council too, along with the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Perfect. Can I just ask about? I, I noticed some development up on Hope Furnace Road. I'm thinking it's on the Coventry side. Is there something going on up there? Yeah. There's a, a newer subdivision. It's called the Oaks at Hope Furnace. Okay. I want to say it's, don't quote me, 30 homes. Yeah. That seemed like something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 
Next on the agenda, boundary markers, and we didn't do any on birthday because mm. we did all our other stuff. So we need to focus back on getting that done. And I've got some still riding in my car to put up. So that's on me. Kiosk, uh, any updates on kiosk? Look, signs. Um, just on the kiosk, when we noticed when we were walking towards the McGuire property, there was an empty kiosk up right. on the um, the bike path and wasn't sure what should be there or could be in there. We think that's where the neon property is. Yeah, we just weren't sure. And then we didn't want to talk about business. <laughs> we like clammed up. <laughs> um, so yeah. it's facing the south. So if you're walking on the Trestle Trail, runs east west. So if you're walking, we're west, working west. And yeah, it was on the south side. Yes. The, yeah. So it's facing yeah. the south. So it yeah. would have to be neon. Okay, that's what we couldn't figure out. But it was empty. Uh, we could see that it was empty, right. but it didn't it's look damaged. No, it didn't look damaged. It didn't look damaged at all. So I yeah. thought we could the use nail, it. The nailing? Yeah. 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 It yeah I had, also, I thought we could use it. You know, it. I had uh, two different sites to walk in and to yep. accept that site. We didn't see it. We didn't through. know that there was whether there was any path into the neon property. Um, yeah, that was before my time. So. Yeah. Oh, I think I do remember when we walked it and going by it. And yeah, it was up a little bit on a bank. So yeah. just another oh, okay. we could put some, yeah, something we could put stuff in again, just, mm -hmm. you know. All right. And we got something into the uh, Sullivan. You know, that was nice. Yes. Yep. So we're still going to get the go. sign in for Sullivan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. We had that we in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um. So did we, I know we had some line posters and things like that. Did that yep. get put, put in anything? I think it did at Stella Hall. I think I remember seeing it. I still have some laminated copies in case we need more of them. I sent a picture of that to your email. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. All right, and we'll jump back on signs with Larry. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold the hold the okay. report uh, just because Larry's. Yeah, he, I them. checked okay. my email. He he didn't send me something to say he's not coming. Okay, so we'll hold the fort. We'll easy. swing back. Larry was uh, had some stuff for us based on our trail walk on the, around the property there. Is the door open, John, for him to be able to get in? If he's... Yeah, the door is open. Okay. And you guys got in the, yeah. the exterior okay. door. I didn't yeah. know. Oh, didn't keep going. I'll just double just check. check for him. Yeah. 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 Down the hallway. What about getting this, uh, the sign in at the Sullivan property? We really need to do that. Yeah. And public works has been extremely busy. Yeah. And I would reach out to them. I was going to volunteer my my crew, but my crew is extremely busy, right. of, of especially this part of the growing season. Yep. So. I think they were on Stella Hall, which kind of leads me to my next one. I went to Stella Hall uh, last weekend, I think it was, um, and the area I had hoped that we could burn, um, which I have reached out to the end about, I found they had taken out the old beaver dam and put all the mud and such in that area, which I don't know why. I think um, Public Works and, and Jack and I, uh, Jack had reported that the gate was was down or whatever. And uh, yeah. I think Public Works has been going and breaking the dam because it floods mm -hmm. the road. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, it floods and the road. The butterflies did like it. Um, there is beaver activity though, as in I found a fresh print and fresh chew. But the black there was a black racer there. We scared each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think wildlife wise, natural resource wise, it's fine. It's just something I noticed. But then with the gate, I actually emailed John about it because I was there in the evening of a Saturday. 
when I walked in at like 5.30 ish, gate was up and locked. When I left at 6.30, it was down and broken. Well, when think, was that? Uh, not this past Saturday, the Saturday beforehand. Okay. It was repaired either today or yesterday. Okay. Okay. The chain that goes Yeah, across. somewhat. It and Jack, you, you thought the gate, it, would, it was fatigue that made it fail, or do we think that it was tampered with? I think the break happened inside the PVC, and I think it must have been precious about it. I think someone tried to drive up and yeah, slam maybe it, but pushed against it. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. I did see some other folks when I was there. I was kind of off in the Beaver Dam side, letting the dog go for a swim. But I didn't see any cars like go Black in tracks. or hear anything. It was yeah. really bizarre. That's also where we remember we discovered the trail cams there. Yeah. Like I wonder still who owns those tra trail cams, who put those up and why. Well, my guess is they're hunters. And, put them up, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, we also had some vandalism originally done mm -hmm. on there, including pulling down our boundary marker. Right. Sign uh, in there. So there's some people in that area or uh, think that they should have access to riding ATVs, I think. And because that's, you know, they like going out to that sand, I'm sure. Oh, sure. So we may end up having to work with. There the, he is. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we may have to end up working with the police and saying that we're getting vandalism there. Um, Hopefully the town just didn't lose the key and then break the Bust chain with the, the back yeah. hole so they could go in there to go work on the beaver dam. But I saw no one there. Right. When was the Saturday? And it was up and, and then down. It, yeah. Within that short time. Mm -hmm. It literally. Mm -hmm. Which makes me think it was someone intentionally doing yeah. that. Yeah. So that I had half a mind to call the police because it was like it had just happened. Just but I wasn't happened. sure. Okay, we need to keep a close eye on on that um, property. And I know Jack, you've been swinging by. So anyone seeing any activity? Um, again, I think it's one of the things we don't want to be bad neighbors, but you know we can't have people breaking gates and stuff and driving out there and having trail cams don't belong on our property for hunting mm -hmm. purposes. Mm -hmm. you know. Like we need our own trail cam. We yeah. may end up having That's to put a camera. Yeah. You know, a hidden camera. Again, at that point, we've got to go through the police and get, you know, mm -hmm. because we, we just can't put surveillance up as much without their wanting to do it. So that would be an action that the town manager and the, if we get, you know, again, I don't want to start a war there because we can't defend our property um, well enough. But if it gets to the point we're getting actual vandalism designed and things, so. But we'll, We'll watch that, monitor that closely. And did we, do we remember other trail cams? I'm trying to remember the, the because that was a while ago that we found yeah. them. Do we know whether they were still, have we? I haven't even looked for them lately. Okay. Where were I, they? I, I know that. Yeah, they were coming in on the left-hand side. It was on the left-hand side, but then, uh, I don't know, the next time I went by, it wasn't there anymore. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, maybe they moved them. I haven't seen any signs. Yeah. yeah. So if you do happen, if you're walking anytime and do find a trail cam, go ahead and call the police because what they can do is they can take the card and 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 they can usually find, you know, what's on the card already on the SD card. But just let the police know so they can go confiscate it. The good thing is if we want to put up a trail cam ourselves with the police's help, they do sell lock boxes for those. Yeah, good. Yeah. It's the, people love to vandalize them. I've had ones vandalized. Yeah, yeah it's a tough battle, a tough battle. Um, just as we saw, and while we're talking general trail system, we saw ATV activity, obviously, on the Bowdoin property, uh, especially on the far side, where it's being used regularly by you know, ATVs that pretty much have a road running through there. Um, so again, that's, you know, the, the worst thing is, is with this dry weather that we're yep. having, and someone mm -hmm. drops a cigarette, 
Mm -hmm. It won't be a, a controlled burn. It's going to be a major wildfire burn yeah. down in there. And that's just because it's so far into the woods. And, you know, again, we don't want to see our property charred right. because of you know, carelessness. But that's what I think we're all afraid of is that those activities. Me and the high schoolers found a lighter mm -hmm. when you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just kind of a way to attack it sideways. Um, I was talking to somebody who, you know, was interested in APVs and we're discussing this issue, these kind of issues. And they suggested that maybe it would be beneficial if the town actually created an AV, AV, ATV spot where you could legally do, do this. I think you can follow the situation going on in Providence because it's been in the front news and stuff and the agencies do not want to have anything to do with it because of the legal liability of okay. and control yeah. of it. It is a massive undertaking. The states that have done things like that, like Maine, you have to get a license plate, you have to get you know all this stuff and you know insurance, insurance and all this registration. Other, yeah, yeah. And it's so it, dangerous. It is it is a huge liability to have an ATV park per se, or trails. And I know they're talking about wanting to use the sand dunes and stuff. I was, for our group, for our land trust property, I don't think we'd really want right. to be interested in, I mean, I do understand, you know, people wanting to, to ride those things, but um, fortunately, it's something that... I did research in Northern New Hampshire once, a few times, and it was ATV land. Like, you could drive on the main road on an ATV, and in two weekends, I saw, or two days, I saw an ambulance both days on the weekend and had folks come up to us because a guy had broken his leg on a trail. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very, very tough. Just dangerous things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dogs like to chase them. Yeah. <laughs> I think just, you know, going into the general trail system, oh, though, okay. is just for us, it's the washouts <laughs> and things that they cause with their ruts and yep. stuff when they keep, right. you know, it just tears up the ground and just. It does creates a lot of uh, potential other issues. And I know they're thinking that they're not hurting anything, but yeah. um, that they are you know, in a lot of ways. And again, it's not a battle that we can fight today. Only if we see it and the more people that use our property for hiking, that's how these things come to a stop because you get more people out there and they start making the phone calls and, and seeing things. We don't want any confrontations, though, for sure. It's not worth uh, physical confrontation out there speaking of big battle in yellowstone even oh yeah we or saw that yeah atvs no thinkings i think of the battle but it's just a mess all right with that and with the arrival of larry we're going to roll back the signage oh oh did i miss it no <laughs> not at all perfect time in the world uh, so uh i made copies of oh okay well, I you got copy <laughs> plenty yeah yeah so this is what uh yeah thank you what and Lynn, I, uh, gave me is a map together too, well i guess so. what y'all decided on the walk through so i i took uh sign two was kind of the most uh verbose so i took that and did a few samples just to see try to get an idea of what size might be Thank you. First, I tried a piece of MDF, which was a disaster. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with MDF. It's basically fiberboard. It's easy to carve, but uh, yeah, the trouble is it's not weather. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's weather resistant if you paint it well, but if you drill a hole in it oh, to, to put it up, that moisture is going to get in there and destroy yeah. it. So uh, I decided P PVC is really the way to go. So um, I took the, the whole text, uh, assigned two at this size, and uh, this thing. Let's see, what is this? This is uh, eight, eight oh, inches. Uh, but it's it's awfully big, awfully oh, wide. And I thought, well, what if we take it, take the different sides, make two sides and put them above or below each other? 
so that they're not as wide. It depends, I don't know what you're going to mount these on. If you're going to mount, mount it on a tree. You don't want a three foot wide sign on a tree right. here. Yeah, Whatever. that would be much better. Yeah, uh, yeah. So most of these are uh, all well. Three of them are have double, double text. So those could be split into singles. And also, I didn't know whether this text size was big enough or right. how big you want it to be. So these were just wild guesses as to what mm -hmm. you thought they might, what you might want. I think that to me looks perfect. Because, this one? Yeah. yeah. It's a good, it's clearly visible. Yep. It's um, just enough for one sign. And so yep. make two. Yeah. Yeah, those are uh, one, one uh, and okay. a quarter inch. Yeah. Uh, I think it's an ICK. Size. Mm. And then the bolts would go in like here and here. Yeah, or or, uh, the beauty of the PVC is it's it lasts forever. It uh, it does never rots. Moisture doesn't hurt it. It's uh, what most people are using for signs nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but, it's easy to come by. Home Depot sells ASEC is the best brand, and, and Home Depot has a whole section on ASEC. You know. So for mounting, and my question, that, uh, because I still got the other sign to put up at the that we made for the, oh. the Bowden property, what do what do I drill it with? Do it, can I just use a regular wood bit oh, and yeah. put a hole through it? Oh yeah, yeah it drills. It's it's even easier than and wood. Okay. Huh. Yeah, it goes right through. Well, it's interesting when you're when you're carving these on a CNC, uh, because it's plastic. If your RPM is, is really fast and you're going too slow, it melts the plastic. Okay. So you have to go fast enough huh. to go avoid through. melting the plastic when you go along. Yeah. But car your car is really clean, actually cleaner than wood. Huh. Mm. So yeah, so that I think would be wonderful. Uh, yeah, I'll hold it from a distance away and you pretend you have a Oh yeah, yeah very, right. very visible. Yeah. Yep. Very visible. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. That's perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and split these up. Yep. Let's see. Let's not, that's quick take is Yeah. So this, this also this the advantage of this is a standard size, one by six. Yeah, you can get those pieces. So you don't have to uh, rip it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so if you could do like, like you can do like that, yeah, we can do, like yeah. Yeah. We can do the, the, the two, three, and four mm -hmm. split like that, and you can just mount them above or below each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the colors could be well, let's see, some of them don't, I'm not sure what color to use for some of them, like two green way that would just make those white or what. Yeah, because that was going to go at uh, the intersection of the white trail and the yellow trail. Yeah. So it's really part of the yellow trail, <laughs> but it's just a small, small segment. Oh, well, if it's on the so yellow trail, then it ought to be yellow. yellow down. Yeah. It would, that sign would go here. Okay. So two greenway would point that way oh. but it's on the yellow trail okay so and then the what the what the uh, sign three where is sign what color would that be so that's that would be white because that's for the white trail all right so that so you'd have two signs where i've marked sign three one would be oh. to the greenway one would which be is the yellow the continuation of the yellow trail down to the greenway and the other one is you can't see it. But sorry, the white trail didn't show oh, up. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So the white this one would be white. Yeah, it's actually and the green ray one would be yellow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, oops. And what, yeah. about, what about the quid network? I better write this down. Yeah. So blue would be blue, obviously. Um, yellow, yellow, uh, 
yellow, white, the Kudnik group that's on the yellow trail. The Kudnik well, group. no, that's the segment down here. And I, I don't even know if we want to agree on having a sign for that segment. We didn't walk down it. Um, it's clearly a trail, though. Um, it's a good lookout point. I'd like to, you know, if we did point it out, because people that are walking might not know that they can go down. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, even if we keep it in range with the yellow, in fact. Um, on the new map that I've made, I've colored it orange because we didn't have, we never had it on any of the other maps. So it's a new, a new color. So we could, I'm know. just thinking we're going to have us. I, I would just just to be consistent since we already have a yellow sign there I just leave it into Quinnet Brook and then maybe it can be an extension or whatever just uh, a lookout or whatever maybe a lookout off the yellow trail a lookout off the yellow trail because it's really just down and then back in no place so to Quinnet Brook would be yellow yeah I think that would okay that way would match the other sign that's going to say to upper yellow trail Okay, so virtually everything's yellow except the white trail and the blue trail. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I made a mistake. That's an I. Oh. <laughs> Good Nick. I've seen it spelled both ways on different maps. Consensus is that it's an I. Yeah, I, I live on Quidnick Reservoir. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's really, really that's great. Really awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. Did we need consensus on naming the upper yellow and the lower yellow, or is that what we want to call them? <laughs> Does anyone have any uh, thought process of, you know, the upper yellow is, uh, and then the lower yellow, upper yellow runs across the top of the, the property there, and the lower yellow is the one that goes down to the green lane. I think that's perfect. I think that's great. Yep. Okay. Everyone, all right. Um, um, I'll take an official motion for under under trail system here that we call the, the Bowden Trails upper upper yellow for the, the one on the north and the lower yellow for the one that goes to runs the trestle trail. Do I hear that motion? I so move. Do I hear a second? A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you, Larry. These are great. Yeah, yeah. these are really great. awesome. Sure. Yeah, it's still really, I mean, this takes like eight minutes to color oh, wow. And then, right. it's, in fact, you spend more time waiting for the paint to dry <laughs> than actually making. So, you know, you can make a lot. Let's go ahead and uh, develop plans for the next set. Okay. Oh, these are amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of work. It is. Mm -hmm. work. Both you and Lynn putting that together. Thank you. Yeah. And will that solve the problem of people getting lost on that property? Or do we still need to add labels? I think the, you know, the, the two things that we noticed when we were just doing this, this cleanup is one, the more people that use it, it was that crossing over the, the ATV trail where, you know, do I go left and, you know, we went left instead of going right or whatever. And I think that's the, I think we start with this and then come back. I'm not sure whether additional blazes because we're losing a lot of the trees. Yeah. Right. I do. And I, I did ask Jenner about, you know, in the fall, what was happening is the leaves were covering up where everybody was walking. You know, this time of year is easier, much easier to see the, the path and whether we can just quickly go through the leaf blower and just blow. So the you can see where your footpath should be. Um, we may have to add some more trail signage, but I think what we do is we start with what we have, get that up, and then go back and look and see whether we're gonna. Need uh, to once more. I have these, how do I? What do I do with them? Who do I give them to, or what? Well, what if you I get them to them? Lynn or whatever, then then we're gonna have a another we'll schedule a work party because this is going to take a little bit of work to go walk the trails again and get these that someone's going to be holding and looking at the right height so we'll we'll, we'll schedule a work session just to go we'll, okay. go okay. walking the uh 
trails and make sure that we've got these put the signs up. So I'll give them to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll good. schedule, you know, sorry, get I got to go my wife's birthday. No, oh, yes, no, 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Bye-bye. Thank Thank you. Okay. Excellent. That's great work. Um moving on. Um, so we will schedule a work session where we can just go and store all those signs together and, and it doesn't have to be a full group of us, but a couple of people to help install. And we'll talk about what kind of pole or um, timber or whatever we need to get to mount them on. Um, I don't, I'm not quite sure about having them mounted to any trees or whatever, whether we just want to, you know, get some pressure treated or some composite or whatever, just to, you know, mm -hmm. something that, that we can bolt them to. And hopefully not get run over. Well, <laughs> you know, this is problem. this is going to be, a, you know, yeah, when they start abusing our property, then it gets into the thing where we have to go to the police and where we have to book cameras and stuff. And uh, hopefully they will, we don't bother them. Hopefully they won't bother yeah. us. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Land trust a task sheet. Mm -hmm. I know you guys talked a little bit about this last meeting. Yep. We signed up for chores, uh, went over. Is there any updates that we have that we need to um, cover on that? No, I don't think so. Help me, I school, the kids are coming. Um, so, you know, we know we'll have them involved. We'll be good. Okay. GIS mapping. Okay, so uh, here's the new map for the Bowden property. Apologies again, some of these didn't come out with the text fitted to the, I still have to work with um, staples to get them fitted properly onto the page. But um, thank you. At least to get a sense of the new the new trail system and and what I um, am proposing for the new map, um, keeping the standard format with the brown title, um, the trails marked out with mileage. I only marked a couple of the things that. I took positions for the Rhode Island Walks Challenge creature, the Brook Crossing, and the Boulder Field. Um, so this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Unless cool. there's other changes that um, you want on there, certainly. I like the cautions and the you know so people know, and I think this is great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really great. I didn't know if the dashed yellow for the upper that's nice. Works. That's that. I don't, I guess. Mm -hmm. but the only other way to do it would be to turn it again to turn it into a solid line and then label it upper yellow. No, I think with your, yeah, with your guide of okay, your, your key, everything. Okay, that key looks good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Is the orange okay for the Quidnick yeah. Brook? For the yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, if that's if everybody approves of that, then I'll send a PDF to Gail and John yep. for putting up on the on the website to replace the one that's there. The only question I have, you have Pidnick Brook at 0.73 on the orange and on his sign they have 0.13. Okay. So, Not bad. On this one. Yeah. On the, is that 0.73 is the actual, I think that's 0.13. Probably oh, 0.13 based on the scale. Uh, yeah, I'll have to change that. Thank you for noticing that. So I'll validate the mileage. Yeah, just to correct your skill. Uh -huh. See what's going to be on the trail. Okay. Yep. So this is 0.13. I believe so, based on the scale mm -hmm. that I have on the map. 
I probably mm -hmm. just did a typo on that part at once. Mm -hmm. Put that in. Yeah. All right. Any uh, questions on this map? Looks good. It's beautiful. Yeah. And once we get the, you know, we'll get this finalized uh, with that correction there and onto the website, and we can laminate a copy and put it in the uh, mm -hmm. update the kiosk. Okay. Um, that's all I have okay. to report on oh, the GIS mapping. Great. That's great. I have started a a sample uh, interactive web map, um, but I don't have enough to, to show you guys to see if it's something that you're interested in pursuing. So we'll wait till next time. No. <laughs> okay, uh, new business. Any new business? None. Okay. June 20th agenda. Any uh, additional or subtractions? I think everything that's on here, we're going to probably continue. continue with. Yep. Oh, can I ask the high school students to the site walks? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We add to uh, the June 20th agenda of rescheduling the nature walk. Are you going to be able to do those? Yeah, I'm gonna have a better idea of what DM wants from me for uh, months okay. in a week. So. Might have to do an evening session, but that would be nice for like that'll be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, John, is there anyone here for public comment? Stuss. Stuss. Yeah. I think so. Oh. <laughs> All right, before we wrap it up for the night, is there any other business that I skipped over or that I missed? I'd just like to thank John for his service to the committee. It's been a pleasure yes. working with you. Thank you, John. Thank Jenna, you. he's leaving. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'll speak before you got here. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Good luck in your future endeavors. I know. So, will you be at the next meeting? I will not. I will no, not. This is it. This is my last say. meeting with the town. Wow. Yep. Then can we applaud or something? <laughs> We've known we would have brought you a cake. I know. Oh. All good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I know, but we like cake. So <laughs> 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 any reason to have it is a good thing. Right. Well noted. And yes, thanks for the support that yeah. you've mm -hmm. given us uh, yeah. this trust over the years um, that you've been here. Mm -hmm. And we look forward uh, to. Uh, Continuing on, and we'll be going through another change. And mm -hmm. um, but I, I think our clear mission, you know, we focus on where we are and, and try and put our arms around and get this stuff completed. And that will be a lot of work done if we need this. Get those properties that we're looking at under control, and then get these the signage and, and stuff done. And the Janice Sullivan sign, we do have to figure out a way of, of going up there. Yeah, you know, a whole bunch of high school kids would pick yeah. pickaxes and do it the old fashioned way. Well, my neighbor who built the sign said he'd be willing to help too. Um, he just doesn't have all the he doesn't have an auger at home or uh, yeah, they frown on when you take them from the prison <laughs> off site, so you can't do that. Yeah, I, I think you know, I was hoping to do a little test haul just to see what was you know, sometimes you're lucky that, and I think we had left our two markers, uh, yeah, where we we're going to put the the holes in. I don't think the markers are in the ground anymore. So they've been. Yeah, we know approximately where. Yeah. We're going. yeah. All right. Okay. Let's let's see what we can do on on that, and that may be something that we we'll just get you know again without having an ex small excavator to dig the the right the hole. I'm just doing a sample. Getting a couple of shovels and and things we can get. A lever, but yeah. That needs to get done. Can we set. rent an auger somewhere? I'm I'm afraid that you know there's different types of augers. Mm -hmm. There's the handheld ones with a motor on them that are very difficult to, especially in rocky mm -hmm. soil. It's yeah. nice if it's nice sandy soil, but my guess based on that terrain, rocks. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. going to have some issues, and that's why we were thinking one of those little tiny oh. small. Right, who could ground it excavators up. that could just 
you know, leave a small hole and then we can sink it in the cement that we have for it. So it looks like a scoop kind of thing. Yeah, that's what we're, I, I don't think, uh, unless it's, we're lucky that one of those drill bits will. Yeah. You'll get one hole that's perfect and the next one is all. <laughs> and you may have to move and that's why it's easier with a little excavator. So right. oh, we've got to move six inches that way yeah. versus trying to redrill. Um, so do excavator. Well, yeah. I think the thing is to try and get someone to dig some sample holes yep. just to see what's there. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we only get six inches and hit ledge, then we've got a bigger problem. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Seconded by Jack. And uh, all those in favor of adjourning at uh, 756 p.m. say aye. 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 Any opposed? So voted.